Good morning. Welcome to today's video. It's a continuation of the um, gas law videos and um, this time we'll be talking about Graham's law of diffusion. Now some refer to this law as Graham's law of diffusion and effusion. Now there's a slight difference between the two terms. Diffusion is said to be um, the mixing of gases whereas effusion that is e double f u s i o n refers to the escape of a gas through an orifice so in reality effusion is a kind of diffusion diffusion through an orifice is called effusion now graham was able to observe the relationship between the mass of a gas or the density of a gas and the rate at which the gas moves. Of course, as part of the kinetic theory, we already talked about the fact that molecules of a gas have the ability to move. So according to Graham, there's a simple relationship between the rate at which a gas diffuses and its density. Here's what he said. The rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. Now, because density is closely related or varies in the same way as molecular mass or molecular weight, we could as well say rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to square root of molecular weight. So this is Graham's law. Now, as usual, we could introduce a constant to this expression. Now, assuming I'm using the upper one, I could write rate equals K over root D. So rate of diffusion equals K, the constant, over the square root of the density. And from here, if we were to make K the subject of formula, we would have K equals rate multiplied by root d. Now, since rate times root d is constant, it means that I could write rate 1 times root d1 equals rate 2 times root d2. And then from here, if I were to divide both sides by rate 2 root d1, rate 2 root d1, then it means this becomes over rate 2 root d1, and then that becomes rate 2 root d1. What do we have? Root d1 will cancel out and rate will also cancel out, so that I'm left with r1 over r2 equals root d2 over root d1. So this is what we use to solve some questions on Graham's law of diffusion. Now, looking at this formula, I could expand it a bit. For example, the rate of diffusion of a gas in itself is said to be the volume of gas that diffuses divided by the time taken for it to diffuse, which means therefore that rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the time it takes. So if a gas is, um, let's say a gas diffuses within five minutes and then another gas diffuses within 20 minutes, assuming their volumes were equal. So we have equal volumes of two gases, A and B. A diffuses in five minutes, B diffuses in 20 minutes. Who took the shorter time? A took the shorter time to diffuse. So we say the rate of diffusion of A is higher than the rate of diffusion of B. So a high rate of diffusion is usually marked by a short time of diffusion. So rate is inversely proportional to time, just as rate is inversely proportional to density. So bringing that into this relationship, I could actually write R1 over R2 equals root 
d2 over d1 by the way this and that are the same mathematically then equals t2 over t1 so r1 is up here with d2 inversely proportional and it's also up there with t2 inversely proportional and please bear in mind that at any point in time you can feel free to replace density that's the d there with molecular weight and your answer will always be the same so this is what we use for solving questions on graham's law of diffusion and effusion so it may be that in some instances you need to use r1 over r2 equals root d2 over d1 in some other instances what you use is root d2 over d1 equals root equals t2 over t1 and of course in a question where you are given molecular weight you don't need to start calculating density first you are free to use the molecular weight just like that now here are two questions for us and let's see how we can handle them the first one says 200 cm cube of methane diffuses through a porous pot in 40 seconds so how long will it take for the same volume of sulfur for oxide this time to diffuse through the same pot so they describe diffusion through a porous pot and i'm sure you remember that is what we refer to as effusion so the two gases involved in this question are methane and sulfur for oxide one of them has to be our gas one while the other would be the gas two so let's make methane gas one and sulfur for oxide gas two so based on that, I'm going to bring down a formula here that says T1 over T2 equals root M1 over M2. Remember we said D can be replaced with M. And of course, 2 over 1, 2 over 1 can also be written as 1 over 2, 1 over 2. Same answer. So T1 will be the time taken for methane to diffuse, T2 the time taken for the other gas, M1 the mass of methane and M2 the mass of the other gas. T1, how long did methane take? It took 40 seconds over, here it says how long will the other gas take, so we are looking for T2 equals the square root of Methane. Methane has a mass of 16 because methane is CH4. C is 12. H4, 1 times 4, 4. So we have 16 here. And then the other gas is sulfur 4 oxide, SO2. S is 32. O2 is 32. So that gives us what here? 64. So that 40 over T2 would be equal to the square root of 16 is 4. And then um, for 64, we have 8. So that T2 becomes 40 times 8 over 4. 4 here is 1 and 4 into that is 2. So that T2 becomes 80 seconds. So while it takes 40 seconds for this to happen with methane, it takes 80 seconds for it to happen with sulfur 4 oxide. That's the simple solution to the first question. Now, please take note that any time you see a question on Graham's law of diffusion and the volumes of the two gases given are the same, see, like they said here, how long will it take for the same volume? Once the volumes are the same, be sure that this formula would be useful. However, in cases where the volumes are not the same, such as in this second question, then you would have extra work to do. Now to solve the second question, we have this. So question two, V1 T2 over V2 T1 equals root, uh, let's say M2 over M1. Now in this second case, our gas one will be oxygen while gas two is um, sulfur for oxide. And then going by that, see what we have. V1 will be the volume of oxygen, T2 the time for the other gas, and so on. So that my V1, without wasting time, is 400 times. T2 the time for sulfur, 6 oxide we are looking for. So I'll put T2 here over 
the volume of the other gas is 800 times the time for the other gas, the time for um, the first gas now is 30 seconds equals the square root of 64 over 32. In the previous question, we already saw how the mass of SO2 so was 64, but in the case of oxygen, oxygen is O2, the oxygen molecule, and its mass is 32. So that's how I got that. So moving on from there, I have 400T2 over 800 times 30. This is T2 over 60. How did I get that? 400 into this is 1 and into that is 2. So 2 times 30 is 60. So T2 over 60 equals root 2 because 64 divided 32 is 2. So that T2 over 60 becomes 1.414. And then T2 becomes 60 times 1.414. And that gives us 84.8 seconds. So it takes 84.8 seconds for 800 cm cube of sulfur 4 oxide to diffuse through the same porous pot. So having solved that, we'll see more questions on Graham's law. I mean, you look for more questions on Graham's law. And any 